Hey guys, how you doing? Sandro from Social Woodworks TV. I'm going to show you guys how I made this DIY raised planter box out of $2 fence pickets. You guys want to see how I do it? Stick around and I'll show you how. Everyone seems to be gardening right now because of this COVID-19 pandemic. As you can see, everything's a mess. I'm a hot mess. I haven't had a haircut in God knows how long. I just look sloppy. I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt, but all that put aside, I've been busting out boxes like this uh, for several people and uh, decided to bust out the camera and show you guys how I built this one. This one's also a commissioned one. I'm gonna deliver it today. Uh, but this one's a two by three foot uh, raised planter bed made out of cedar fence picket, $2 fence pickets at Home Depot. Super cheap for material cost. I put a gray wash on this one because that's what they wanted. They wanted a weathered gray look. And it's about 35 inches tall. This thing is perfect for planting veggies, herbs, uh, whatever your heart desires. So if you'd like to see how I built this one and maybe build one for yourself, stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, right, guys, so I've already took the liberty of cutting pretty much all the lumber that I need for this planter box. I have the legs here assembled and I configured them in an L formation. Did a little uh, wood glue on there and some brad nails to hold them together. And I made a tapering jig just to taper the, eggs, the legs a little bit. So I got 16 inches up and we're tapering into one and a half inches. So that's for the legs and I made four of those. Here I have six essentially just cedar pieces of wood that are the same width as the narrower side of the box. Um, and you'll see how I use those later. These are basically just gonna be the bottom of the, uh, the box. I have six pieces cut at 24 inches. These are gonna be the, the shorter side of the box. I have six pieces cut at roughly 36 inches. And these are gonna be the long side of the box. And for the sides of the boxes, um, you don't have to do this. I did this just purely for decoration. It makes it look a little better when you're buttoning up the two pieces of wood. If you can see there, there's a little uh, decorative gap there. So what I did was I just got a round over bit and ran the pieces through my router table and give it a little sort of chamfer on both sides. I did that with the short pieces as well as the long pieces. So I got all my lumber here ready to go. Next is just time to assemble it. So let's get into that. Uh, one more thing to note, you guys, when I made the legs, I made sure to make two legs with a longer portion because I cut the, the picket in half. There's a sh shorter side, which is basically two and three quarters, and then there's a longer side, which is two and three quarters, along with the five eighths of the second board. So make sure you alternate, you make two the same and two the exact opposite with the longer side on the other side. All right, guys, so now that I got all the pieces sanded, it's time to start assembling this thing. So I have with me three of the long side pieces, all sanded down, I got two of the legs, and I made sure to put the longer side on the bottom. That's where I'm gonna attach the side pieces. I got my trusty Ryobi uh, Airstrike Brad Nailer. So here I got some three quarter inch brads, 18 gauge. If you guys don't have a uh, Ryobi Airstrike, well worth the investment. Uh, Ryobi is one of the more affordable uh, power tools out there. Uh, most of my power tools are DeWalt and I have a ton of 20 volt DeWalt tools with batteries, but the DeWalt um, brad nailer is like at least $100 more than this one. And actually all the reviews that I heard said this one is actually more powerful than most of the ones that are on the market. So um, I love this thing. It's super powerful, super convenient. You don't have your big long pneumatic air, air hose. And like I said, Ryobi tools are fairly affordable. I just bought uh, a battery pack with two three amp hour batteries and a charger and a case um, off Amazon or eBay. I don't know, I'll put the link in the description below. It was like 75 bucks for two batteries and a charger and a case. So we're talking 75 bucks for one DeWalt, DeWalt battery. Um, 
Not that they're not worth it, but if you're on a budget, this thing is awesome. And you'll see, I mean, I'll use this thing all day and it won't lose charge. So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna lay out these three pieces on my legs. Just roughly, I just wanna get a feel for uh, the area in which I'm gonna apply glue to the legs. And I'll grab a pencil and I'll just mark on my leg where that third board ends. And then I'll just take these pieces off, kind of slide them down. Now I know I need to apply glue from that pencil mark all the way up to the top of the leg. So I just have some Tide Bond uh, Premium Wood Glue Type 2. And I'm gonna split some glue on to the left leg, pretty liberal. Same with the right leg. Again, pretty liberal. The glue is what's gonna hold this thing all together. The brad nails are just to hold the boards together while the glue dries. So rather than using clamps or something like that, I'm using the brad nails and it doesn't look too bad with the small heads of the brad nails. Now when you're laying these down, make sure if you do chamfer your boards, you want that chamfer side down when you're assembling this, because that's gonna be the outside of the planter box. Set the first one down, and I'm gonna make sure that the first board is level with the top of the leg on both sides. And I'm gonna get my trusty nail gun. I'm gonna shoot a nail in here, and a nail in here just so that it doesn't move around. And go ahead and shoot a few more nails. All right, so the first board is down. I'm gonna get my second and third board. Again, remember the chamfer side goes down. I'm gonna place that on the leg. Get a good contact with the wood glue. Grab my third leg. Put it down as well. Make sure you have good contact with the glue. Make sure your legs are straight. If your cuts are accurate, your legs will be straight. So just make sure you measure twice and cut once when you're cutting all your pieces. Now I got those last two pieces down. I'm making sure that they're butted up tight against each other and tight against the leg. Go ahead and use the brad nailer again. Put you the few nails in. Same thing with the other side. All right guys, so I put the first side that I built aside and I made the second long side, which is what you see here. Things all uh, nailed up and ready to go. I'm gonna start with this side over here. All right. Of course, liberally, of course, as well as on the bottom here. And I'm going to line that up with the first board. Make sure that's nice and straight. I'm going to go ahead and shoot a nail through the back just to hold it. Go ahead and shoot a couple more nails in here. All right, so there's the first board. Grab another one here. Again, make sure that your uh, chamfered side goes on the inside. No, it goes on the outside. So as you can see, I have one short side assembled to this, and I'm gonna do this side now.
So what I'm gonna do is actually just get some glue along the end grains of these boards and then I'm gonna get some glue on the front face. Try not to make too much of a mess here. There's gonna be some drips, but nothing a wet rag won't cure. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these down over those pieces of wood. Make sure we have good contact with the legs. And I'm gonna get a rag and try to wipe some of this glue off. We have four sides to our planter box. Now all I gotta do is assemble the bottom. All right guys, so now that I got the four sides of the box made, what I did was I got a two by four and I ripped it in half, essentially. I made a, a two by two out of it, or a one and a half by one and a half. Got two pieces and uh, glued and nailed those down. So now I have a little ledge, um, basically just at the bottom of the second uh, board so liberal amount of glue as always as I said the glue is what actually holds this thing together not the brad nails so put glue on both sides So what I do is I measure from each side of the leg. In this case, it's 25 and a half. And then long ways, in this case, it's 36 and three quarters. And what I'll do is add an inch extra to each side. So 25 and a half plus two inches will give me 27 and a half. 36 and three quarters will give me 38 and three quarters. So my frame's gonna be 38 and three quarters by 27 and a half. All right, guys, for the piece de resistance, the cap, the trim, the piece that sets this thing all off. I got my two long pieces mitered, my two short pieces mitered, 27 and a half, 38 and three quarters. Take a little of my tight bond too. I'm just gonna apply it not that liberal here because I don't want it to squeeze out too much. Just put a little bead of glue on there. And I'm gonna butt it up to the other piece here. Get a nice tight bond with that glue. Hence the name tight bond. Put my square back in there. And now with the staple gun, I'm just gonna put a staple, two staples right over the seam and it's going to hold it long enough so I can flip this thing over and actually put it on the box. So as I said, I'm just going to place the stapler on one corner, shoot a staple through, make sure the staple goes through both pieces of the wood, get the other corner here, make sure you push down nice, get a good staple in there. The tight bond too and we're just going to put a bead of glue all the way around the edge of this box on all the legs and the sides so now we take the frame 
and we set it on top. I'm just gonna go ahead and get my rag saturated with the vinegar that's uh, been soaking in the uh, steel wool. I'm literally just gonna wipe it off. I'm gonna make sure I got a good coat of vinegar on there. Make sure I get in those little crevices. All right, John, so what do you guys think? How do you like this weathered gray look? I don't know about you, but I dig it. I like the cedar look too. I think cedar is a beautiful wood in general, but this is kind of that popular kind of shanty, boho, I don't know, sort of weathered gray look. Kind of like if I, if I made this out of old barn wood, 100 year old barn wood, that's what this would look like. I achieved this look with a little bit of vinegar and steel wool and some $2 fence pickets. So I love it. I don't know if you guys like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, put in the comment section below why you don't like it or what you prefer or whatever anything is fine with me i love reading your comment yeah guys this is it you guys can do it too it's really simple two dollar fence pickets um you know twenty dollars of material i don't know i don't have anything else to say guys so i guess we'll see you on the next video i'm gonna ask one more time please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already social woodworks tv youtube channel anyways guys Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. See ya.